Now, most videos about the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 are going to point out how sharp it is, or how well built the lens is, or how nice the background blur is. But I'm here to tell you the most important thing about this lens is the 13mm focal length. And in the last couple months of shooting with this lens, there's really two things that I found that this lens really excelled at. And one was giving you the ability to play with perspective. Because it is 13 millimeters, which is quite a wide lens, it has the effect of making the things that are closer to you seem closer to the lens, and the things that are further away seem quite far or much further away from the lens than they really are. This is not so much that you're getting that sort of weird bulbous fisheye effect. It still feels very much like a standard photo, but it just makes things that little bit more interesting. And it really gives you the ability to play with the dimensions and play with the perspective that this lens gives you. And I also find that that 13 millimeters is so wide on an APS-C size sensor that it allows you to tell a story. So the second thing I really noticed is what an incredible storytelling lens this was. You can just fit so much in the frame to really tell a quite detailed or interesting or compelling story with one single photograph. And for those reasons alone, I consider this lens one of the best, if not the very best lens that you can buy for the Fujifilm system right now. And not only is it one of the best, it's also one of the cheapest, which is just absolutely crazy. And in fact, it's only about 40% the price of what you pay for the Fujifilm 16 millimeter f1.4 lens. And I think when I'm going around shooting with it, I'm finding that 13 millimeter focal length far more interesting, far more compelling than the 16 millimeter lens. And even though it's inexpensive, the build quality is on par with a native Fujifilm lens. It's every bit as good as my 16 millimeter f1.4. I mean, you're getting an all metal body, you're getting a metal mount, you're even getting a metal lens hood, which is the one thing that has really been the bane of these Fujifilm native lenses. The lenses that Fujifilm make, they have these cheap plastic lens hoods. Viltrox is giving you a metal lens hood. So everything feels completely premium, and I would suggest it is at least as good as the build quality of my Fujifilm lenses, if not better. And the aperture ring on the lens actually feels very, very similar to the Fujifilm system ones. And, and if anything, I would say it's probably even slightly more satisfying. I find there's a real inconsistency with the Fujifilm lenses. They're kind of all over the place. One will be loosey-goosey that barely clicks and the other one will seem too stiff and then the clicks are a little bit uncertain. But this aperture ring is almost like the Goldilocks of aperture rings for me. It just turns really nicely. There's just the right amount of stiffness and the click is just firm enough, but it's still easy to turn around. Now, when it comes to the focus ring, I find that it's a very similar situation. It's really smooth. It's just stiff enough without being too stiff. It just feels really, really nice. If if this lens came and it had Fujifilm's name on it, I would be happy to pay $1,000 for it, and I would think well and truly that I got my money's worth, and I would also think that Fujifilm had done a good job of upgrading the build quality of their lens since their last rendition of lenses. So I really think that you are going to be very satisfied if you are a native Fuji shooter and you've been shooting with Fujifilm lenses all along. I think this is going to fit right into your collection. And once you start using it, you won't even think about it being a third-party lens because it just doesn't feel like one. Now, one of the most challenging things about the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 is figuring out who's got it in stock and who's got the best price on it. And in the description down below, I have just put some price check links, which allow you to go through and compare the prices between a number of the top suppliers and see who's got this lens in stock right now. Now, one question probably people are going to have is how is this going to hold up? Now, I've only had it a couple of months, so I can't say how it's going to hold up over a longer term. But I can tell you that I was out shooting fireworks at a friend's 4th of July party by a lake and I couldn't see and it was very dark. And I thought I had the camera mounted on the tripod properly. I did not. And the camera fell off. And as it was tumbling to the ground, I had this sort of moment of inspiration that if I just stuck my foot out, I would break the fall of the camera before it hit the ground. And maybe that would, I don't know, slow the descent enough to not damage the body or lens. But in the moment of excitement, I swung my foot too hard and I essentially punted, I punted the camera and lens down the hill and it went tumbling all the way down the hill. By the time I picked it up, it was covered with water. It was covered with grass because the grass was wet. In the end, 
I just wiped off the the moisture on the lens and it was absolutely fine. So there was a tiny little mark on the focus ring. But other than that, it just works and looks just like it did when it was new. So at least from that perspective, it held up well. We'll see how it goes in the long time term, but I'm reasonably confident that the build quality is going to hold up over the long term. Now, when we look at the size of this, there have been a few people saying that they thought they wished it was a little bit smaller. And I don't really know where that's coming from because at 13 millimeters and f1.4, I kind of expect it to be a reasonable size lens. And I'm just bringing a couple of the native Fujifilm lenses here. So in the middle here, I've got the Viltrox. And on this side, this is the 10 to 24 millimeter F4. And this is the 16 to 80 F4. Now, these are obviously zoom lenses, so they're a little bit more versatile, but they're both F4 lenses as well. And in the middle, we have the Viltrox 13 millimeter F1.4. So you can see if either of these lenses are going to be sitting nicely and comfortably on your camera, then the Viltrox 13 millimeter F1.4 is going to be almost identical. And I would say weight wise, they're all sort of very similar. Maybe the 10 to 24 is the lightest, but they're all, all fairly similar overall. And I just felt it fit really well. I used it on my Fuji X-T3 and Fuji X-T4. So just bearing that in mind. Uh, and if you do, if you are currently using some of the smaller lenses and you're thinking this is going to be a little bit bigger or bigger than you maybe want, I would just suggest getting a grip extension. Pretty much all the Fujifilm cameras, you can get a grip extension for them. That just gives you a little bit more meat to hold on to with a little bit bigger lens. But if you're shooting with any of these other zoom lenses already, you already know what this lens is going to feel like. What is the Viltrox 13 millimeter f1.4 good for shooting? Well, uh, a range of things and a lot more things than I kind of thought that I would actually use it for. Now, of course, it, it seems quite natural for it to be a landscape lens, particularly a low light landscape lens. 13 millimeters is a great wide field of view for landscape and the f1.4 is going to allow a lot of light in. I was using it at f8, f9, f11 a lot of times in the traditional way that you would use a landscape lens and particularly stop down at those levels. It is razor sharp and not just razor sharp in the middle. It's razor sharp across the entire frame. I also used it for cityscape and buildings and walking around a busy city because it is a rectilinear lens. You actually don't get much of that or very little of curvature. So the barrel distortion is so well controlled. In fact, it's interesting because this lens doesn't have the the corrections in camera, so the, the Fujifilm cameras aren't correcting for the lens. So Viltrox has actually designed a lens that straight out of the lens without any digital correction is extremely square and extremely rectilinear. And you, you really get almost no curvature in those buildings at all, and certainly not at a level that you would even notice. You really kind of have to put a ruler up against it to actually notice there's any curvature. So because of that, it's great for buildings. It's great for architecture. It's great for interiors, interior architecture. I found it a really, really good lens for that. Something that I really wasn't thinking about using it for. So it was kind of my street city lens for the past month as well. I also see it good for environmental portrait. Now, you don't, you really can't get the person at the corner of the frame because even though it's a rectilinear lens, as you get to the edge of those frames, you do get some distortion. It's not barrel distortion. It's just true perspective distortion. So if you keep the person in the middle of frame and you're not too close to them, it actually ends up looking like quite a standard lens. And I'll throw a few photos on screen now. And, and if you have a look at these, you would never guess that these were shot with a 13 millimeter lens. It just doesn't have that sort of really wide, weird perspective view. So depending on how you use this, you can make very good environmental portraits. Just keep the person sort of more in the middle of the frame but it also captures a, a lot around them. So it gives a lot of context to the portrait that you're taking. I think this is also a very natural travel and vlogging lens. Now, coming back to the storytelling aspect of this lens, because you can get so much in, it does allow you to tell those travel stories by getting all that information in. You can also turn it on yourself and use it as a vlogging lens. And once again, because it's so wide, you're going to get that context. You're going to get yourself, but you're going to get a lot of the surrounding environment. So it doesn't feel like it's just sort of your head in the middle of the frame and you're sort of isolated telling the story. 
it's going to get that environment around you and just set the scene for the story that you're telling or the information that you're sharing. I think it's also quite a good YouTube lens. Like right now I'm shooting on the Sigma 16 millimeter, but at 13 millimeters, you're just gonna get a little bit wider field of view. You're just gonna get a little bit more information in there. And what, what I'm seeing with the YouTubers right now is a lot of the YouTubers shooting on full frame are going to that 20 millimeter equivalent focal length. So. At that 20 millimeters, once we crop it down by 1.5, we're at 13 millimeters. So I think I was quite surprised when I started playing with it for my YouTube shots. I thought, wow, this looks a lot like the big creators, like your uh, Peter McKinnon or Maddie Hapoya or any of those guys, those big storytellers. They are using those lenses around that 20 millimeter focal length. Maybe they're using a zoom lens, but you can definitely tell they're playing around that 20 millimeter mark. So I think you'd be surprised once you start shooting with it, it's going to look very familiar to you. You're gonna go, yes, this looks like what I'm seeing on YouTube right now. And although this is one of my most recommended lenses for the Fuji mount right now, if your goal is to get blurry background portraits and you're really focused on a portrait style lens, whether it be for family or travel or professional, then I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is another Viltrox lens that is 27% the price of the Fujifilm 56 millimeter F1.2 and about 15% of the price of the 50 F1.0. And in most situations, you will not be able to tell the difference between this lens and either of those Fuji lenses.